Hi, I'm going to walk you through this PowerPoint because it's a little dense and I want to make sure that uh, you have um, a good understanding of this for before our class. Okay, so I read the article about literacy and identity and specifically implications for um, research and practice. I don't know why it's not letting me go to the next slide. Hmm, let's just see if I can try it again. Okay, let's see. All right, so what is identity? Um, according to the definition of the dictionary, uh, identity is the distinguishing character or personality of an individual. Uh, the relation established by psychological identification, the condition of being the same or the sameness of essential or generic characteristics. So. Identity is really important in adolescence because um, key identity formation times are between the ages of 11 and 18. And uh, you might, that might become, seem very obvious to you. But identity is more than just those stable characteristics. Identity is social, it's cultural, it's historical, it's institutional, it could be political. It's basically that story that we tell ourselves to help us get through our lives, navigate the world, perform for others. And for adolescents, these identities can be very um, black and white, uh, a good student, a bad student, a jock or an art student, straight or not straight, or conformist, not conformist. So for kids as they're trying to experience these identities and kind of try on these different roles or different hats or different clothes, however you want to kind of think of it, um, it's really important because they're just kind of exploring who they are. Why is it important for you guys to be thinking of identities? And um, the article started with a really good example. It was a school, an inner city school. Um, the researchers were there for something. There was a newspaper article and it was basically something like how one school is using hip hop to stop dropout rates. And they really pointed out that texts have meanings. And the meaning of a text depends on the identities of the readers. So if you are a, um, so if you read this article, you might think that, you know, black teenagers, they're ascribed an identity by the readers that they are dropouts or they, they all like hip hop or they all need to be saved, right? We've got to stop dropout rates. We've got to save these students. But what about the students in that school who aren't, do not, ascribe to that identity who maybe don't like hip hop or aren't dropping out or are college bound. So I think one thing we have to really do, we have to be very, very careful in schools is how texts communicate stereotypes, how texts and the way we talk and the way we frame things um, narrow identities or ascribe identities to students who really aren't part of that identity um, and impact how students take on identities um, as they're growing. And I think it's a it's really important in school because this is where identity formation is happening. So the um, Lewis and I can't say oh Deval um, were talking about oh and I want to say I picked this because actually uh, Cynthia Lewis is a bit of a role model of mine academically. It's my ac academic um, identity. I had like a little professional um, scholar crush on her when I was an, a doctoral student and she's now at University of Minnesota. Um, I'm kind of, she's an idol to me. But um, although this was an incredibly dense article and not like some of the other things I've read by her. But Lewis and Duvall talk about there are different waves of identity research or I did thinking of identity that's impact literacy research. The first wave is identity through the lens of cultural conflict. Basically, uh, back in the 70s and 80s, researchers believed and theorists believed that identity was stable. Identity is unified. You are this thing. And um, identity has a stable set of characteristics. You're working class, this is your identity. You're um, a certain political party, this is your identity. Or you're uh, a good student, this is what your identity. And that there was no place for home or cultural identities in school, that those two things were separate. You have your home identity, 
your cultural identity and your school identity. And educational inequity or inequality was a mismatch between home and school culture. So there was a lot of research about um, how kids who couldn't adapt or couldn't it couldn't adjust to school culture because of their home culture would get in the way, um, and then uh, that would be problematic. There was a famous study in 1977, uh, a linguistic mismatch caused teachers in a first grade classroom to identify African American students as low ability, and the need to have you know be saved or you know we have to control what they learn for literacy because their home uh, literacy is in conflict. Um, so that first wave of thinking of identity as a stable thing and and often at odds with each other. Um, I like to think of the Leona puppy uh, example. Uh, this is one that I learned in grad school. And this was a story uh, about a um, second grader, an African-American second grader. Her name was Leona and it was sharing time and she was telling the story about her puppy. And it was rambling. It didn't make any sense. She was like, today, it's Friday the 13th. It's a bad luck day. And my grandmother's birthday's on a bad luck day. And my mom is baking a cake. And then I went to my grandma's house and was baking a cake. And when my mom was baking a cake, she, um, oh, my grandmother was baking cream cuff cakes. And we both went over to my mother's house. It's a rambling, crazy story. But when Jim G, who's a linguist, um, actually analyzed it, he saw that it where we perceive it as kind of this non sequitur crazy story, it actually was very um, rich and had a beginning, middle, end, used a lot of rhetorical devices, things that were valued in the student's home culture, but wasn't necessarily valued in the school culture. And because of that mismatch, the teacher led, uh, led the teachers to some uh, erroneous assumptions about Leona. So that would be first wave. Second wave, which is 1990s, and this is when I did my doctoral work, um, was literacy practices serve social functions, that each context holds different expectations for how individuals will act. And you kind of have your out of school contexts in your school contexts. And your out of school context actually can be very rich in literacy. Um, and you can be doing a lot of really important literacy work in these out of school contexts. So um, basically, by looking at these out of school contexts and uh, learn legitimizing what counts as literacy, the oral culture, or this is when technology starts to come into play, things like fan fiction or gaming or social media or group uh, blogging or zines, all of a sudden researchers are saying, hey, look at all this rich liter literacy that's going on in whole out of school contexts. And how can we harness those out of school contexts, that literacy that's going on there to really support the in school literacy work that we need to do as well as teachers. We also see in the second wave a um, space for critiquing and questioning dominant ideologies and, and identities in the classroom. So why did this text say this? And how does that impact the narrative that we're hearing in uh, um, in the media or around us or so we're kind of starting to question uh, dominant identities and giving kids space to not necessarily conform to those stable what we once thought were stable identities and that we can bring in those out of school practice that we can give students choice this is where book clubs became important and different you know ways to to be literate and use literacy and perform identities in a more fluid way going using those out of out of school literacies at home school you know just kind of more fluidity there um, and this signaled the new direction in, in identity thinking and literacy that uh, literacy practices along with identity are multi-layered and multi-dimensional and there's more fluidity between um, the way we perform ourselves in different contexts. Um, and youth do more than just perform their identities, they actually can question them, they can uh, be engaged in thinking about our identities. So this kind of was a second wave. Uh, which leads us to our third wave of identity thinking around literacy in adolescence is more of a hybrid 
meta discursive that means talking about kind of this the um, discussions we have and spatial and this has a lot to do with technology so things like digital transnational spaces um, you've got local global flows of activity because of social media because of the internet uh, media and digital texts and communities are allowing more fluid shape shifting um, helping students think about their identities through competing discourses um, how they relate to multiple social worlds uh, that they have to negotiate in adolescence um, hybrid identities are encouraged. This is where you see a lot of gender fluidity is now uh, much more encouraged than it was back in the early thoughts when we thought you are can only be one thing. Um, as students move between and within different social groups or different contexts and supporting adolescent literacy using digital media is really important in the third wave, helping students produce, be producers, not just consumers of, of media. So, Identity is important with uh, literacy and research because as concepts of identity change, so does the lens through which researchers view and understand literacy. The way we think about literacy is different now in the 2000s as it was in the, when we thought identity was fairly stable. And also identity is culturally and socially situated, but literacy is also culturally and socially situated. So the two of those things definitely and what does this mean to you as a teacher? Well, I think you really need to think about how students bring those multiple identities into the classroom. And your role is to enhance students' ability to leverage these social, cultural, political, economic, you know, ways of being and understanding as they negotiate social situations. Helping students navigate complex and often competing identities bring in texts that challenge them, that, that help different students bring in different parts of their identity. And um, by studying and understand how students' identity ne negotiations occur as they engage in literacy with the goal of how to support students, both identity growth and literacy growth. So this is basically what this article said. We're gonna discuss it in class tomorrow.